Israel marks International Holocaust Remembrance Day on January 27, a tribute to the millions of Jewish people who died during World War II. But for Israel and the Philippines, the tragic event also marks the start of a beautiful friendship anchored on hospitality and kindness. In this episode of Food Diplomacy, Israel Ambassador Effie Ben Matityahu sits down with Annalisa Burgos to talk about Jerusalem, technology, agriculture, and how bilateral ties remain strong up to this day. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Ambassador, good to see you. Welcome to my home. Thank you so I much for inviting me. It's a pleasure. I hope that you're going to feel at home and okay. home with the Israeli food. Ambassador, I'm super excited to see what you've prepared for us. What have you prepared? What you see around is the most more popular and some very special dishes that are really typical to communities in Israel. Okay. What typifies Israel is 100 and more communities who come from more than 100 countries. So each and every community comes to Israel with a fusion. Israel has a great influence of the Middle East mm -hmm. and typical Middle Eastern food, which was traditionally, I mean, spread all over, is now here on the table. I recognize some. I have uh, recognized the hummus. So this is the shakshuka. Mm -hmm. Shakshuka is one of the most important elements in an Israeli breakfast. The mix of uh, vegetables and, uh, and the tomatoes, and of course, I mean, the eggs. You can have it anytime, but it's very typical for breakfast. For breakfast, okay. Yeah. Now, this is a kube soup. This is typical also to the Middle East. And it's made of uh, potatoes, it's made of uh, 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 beetroot. It's like a meatball soup. It's a meatball soup. Okay. It goes all across, I mean, North Africa as well. Ah, okay. This is marakte mani, Yemeni it's, soup. It's a Yemenite soup. Yeah, Yemenite soup. It's a uh, chicken, but we can make it with the meat too. Many spices inside, it's uh, like 18. It's very healthy because of the spices, it's very healthy. And then I see like a salad. <laughs> Julia, please come join us. I mean, you should tell us I mean, what's in there. The salad is made from beetroots, uh, carrots, potatoes. It's supposed to be pickles, but pickles are hard to find here in the Philippines. So we just put cucumbers, mm. uh, onion, and green peas. It's I mean, supposed to be a cold dish. Okay. You eat it before the soup, or you eat it like a um, regular a main dish as well. Okay. Now we are going to move around. It's uh, Over there is the pita bread. Benny, who is producing for you the pita. And of course the bagels are very also very yes. typical I mean, to our uh, culture. Normally, by the way, we eat this bread on uh, weekends, on the Friday evening, not oh. just a, it's not an everyday bread. This is a uh, it's a uh, Yaman bread. It's uh, going well with the, the soup, the marak de mani. And then what's this? It looks like a... This is jahnun. We cook it like uh, 12, 14 hours. Oh, wow. Low fire. What's in it? What, what is it made of? It's a, this is a, from a flour. Okay, it's just but bread. the way you make it, this is the... This is, uh, oh. You make it again and again and again and after like 12, 13, 14 hours. So there's no Very meat, there's no, no other no, no, ingredients, no, no. it's, it's purely of, bread. It's a purely, yeah. it's a kind of a flowery bread. You should know that uh, today Israel is specializing, especially the popular food is based on vegetables and daily products. Okay. And Tel Aviv is regarded as the vegan capital of the world today. Vegan capital, of, vegan the capital of the world. Yeah. Ev everywhere you're going to see vegetables, especially, I mean, we're talking it's about tomato, very, it's yeah. always incorporated. So I was just going to point out the falafel, of course, oh. I recognize that. And that is your specialty? Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> why that's a secret it. recipe as this well. Is, yeah. That's why we call it Benny Falafel. I don't make it in the restaurant. Oh. Special place where nobody no, see, it's nobody it's knows. Yeah. But it, it, chickpeas are still the, the yeah, yeah, chickpeas main. Yeah, chickpeas is the bicycle. Yeah, okay. But it's uh, no gluten. Oh, okay. Everyone put all, all flour yes. or uh, 
or bread, uh, white bread, wet bread uh -huh. with, uh, with water, make it like this. But uh, me, no, it's not gluten. I was turning this way because I see ah, that you I see. have okay. some special wines on the, the next table. And well, I didn't realize that uh, wine was a, a big product. Wine was definitely one of the main uh, uh, products of the Holy Land in, from time immemorial. Yes. And when Israel was reborn uh, 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 like 70 years ago, there was a, a small movement going back, I mean, to the wine industry. Mm -hmm. By now, in the last 25 years, it's booming. And we have a very beautiful range. Is it exported to the uh, Philippines already? It's not cheap and it's not easy to bring it in because you need to have a volume. Mm and we are looking for someone to do that. But okay. at this stage, I mean, it's really coming in, it trickles, but anyone who touched it, and I can tell you many of the Filipinos are really looking for it. We are going to taste it, by the yes, way. Let's, let's, uh, let's try. Which let's one do it. Let's do it. A Merlot. Or life and Lahaim. Lahaim. Mabuhay. A taste Lahaim. of Israel. So, um, you know, Ambassador, I wanted to ask because, you know, the relationship between Israel and Philippines, 60 years at least, but it actually goes way back, correct? When talking about Philippines and Israel, we have two pillars in our relations that are, I, they precede our statehood and they are above politics. And one of them is actually political, but it's different in nature. Mm -hmm. And it starts with, uh, with, this year, by the way, is a jubilee year. 80 years to the story of Manuel Quezon and his uh, uh, agreement to, or his uh, initiative to open the gates of Philippines to uh, the Jewish people who were looking for a shelter out of Nazi Germany, out of Aust Austria, Nazi Austria in those days. He granted 10,000 visas for Jewish refugees from Germany and Austria. It's a fascinating story. Uh, because it's uh, it's really about uh, the nature of uh, the hospitality nature of the Filipinos, mm -hmm. and uh, that earned Philippines a debt of gratitude from the Jewish people, and it also led Israel and the Philippines to sign a, an agreement uh, where we exempted Filipinos from visa requirement uh, for the last uh, 50 years. So I'm you are one of the few countries that actually lets uh, Filipinos travel without visa, visa since 1969. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful monument uh, next to Tel Aviv. It's called the Open Door Monument, which is honoring the Filipino people. Mm -hmm. And here we are also going to have a special uh, a dedication of a circle, a friendship circle. Date, the uh, historical date is the 29th of November, mm -hmm. where the UN held a special vote uh, deciding whether or not to create the State of Israel. Mm -hmm. So that was November 29, uh, 1947. And the uh, Philippines was the only Asian country who voted for this uh, resolution. So these two events are the marking of a very unique relationships and a very unique uh, gratitude of, that Israel is having vis-a-vis -vis the Philippines. And also marks our relationship over time. Israel was, I think, the first country who came to help Philippines during Yolanda. Okay, yeah. That was, uh, I think, we were the first one to land here and to establish a uh, a field hospital and we have a very extensive uh, uh, program uh, for collaboration in uh, different uh, especially in education agriculture food security agriculture is very strong so and there is a good exchange we actually have every year 600 students from the philippines going to israel for in 11 months ojt because we look at this agri sector as a challenge uh, for development mm -hmm. it's normally associated with poverty so in order to pull them out. They need the skills, know-how, uh, mm -hmm. technology. So I think that the uh, Philippines earned this very unique position in our minds mm -hmm. because of this uh, unique approach. Of all places of the world, it was here in the Philippines that Tintin Paredes, who at that time was the, uh, the president of the Senate, mm -hmm. together with the church and the Manila municipality, organized a demonstration against Nazi Germany. What do you think is it? It's is amazing. It the, I mean, for um, me, it was amazing to see this. I mean, is it a connection of, all places, uh, of faith? You know, is it is a connection of, you know, because of course they see, Filipinos see um, Israel as like the Holy Land, pilgrimages are done there, and a lot of tourists go there for that reason. I think that uh, the fact that Israel is also the Holy Land makes a difference. And the fact that Israel, oh, the, the Jewish faith is the foundation of uh, the other, other religion in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. The offspring of uh, Judaism is Christianity. Mm -hmm. 
I think also it's a characteristic of a nation, basically. I mean, that's the way fairness and the uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, you have a, you, you care, in a sense. Mm -hmm. you, you, and you see, I mean, how And Filipinos that's why a lot of today, our caregivers are so in it's Israel. Amazing. And it was this uh, the notion of, you know, you, are all, you were also under the, what we call the grip of uh, colonial, colonial powers, and uh, uh -huh. you know, we went through all these chapters, and it, it's kind of, you know, uh, connections. Actually, how big is the community here in the Philippines? Now, economically, we are at a very interesting stage. Israel is known to be uh, what we call one of the high-tech high -tech capitals of the world. Mm -hmm. If you use Waze, it's made in Israel. I read that, and if I read Viber. Viber is Israel. You and we right. use them so often here. Yeah. But it was invented in Israel, but it was sold to Google. Ah. Viber was sold to a Japanese enterprise. Ah. So when you talk about uh, uh, software, Intel's Pentium and Intel Celeron that you have in your computers mm -hmm. was mostly, mostly designed in Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the Israeli uh, uh, mm -hmm. environment and it's mostly about creating technology for other corporations, others to use. Okay. So we are not taking the technology to the, the industry, to, to the market as an industry, but rather we sell it to other industries. Yeah. Philippines is definitely one of our customers. And this is basically what I see as the future relations, is how to tap into the reservoir of your entrepreneurship and young, innova young innovators or young businessmen who are looking for the next phase of uh, a, what we call the higher end industries, higher end uh, 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 economy, which is not the traditional one. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about technology is the higher end uh, economy. And you mentioned eventually. the agriculture sector is yeah. a key part of that. You go to Mindanao, to many of the plantations there, mm -hmm. the water management, irrigation. We invented also the drip irrigation, which is now one of the key uh, irrigation systems in modern agriculture. You also have to alleviate, I mean, poverty through food security and beyond, how to commercialize the small and medium enterprises or micro enterprises to become mm -hmm. more commercial in their nature. Yeah, 99% are small, medium enterprises here. Are you, do you think the Philippine businesses are doing enough to oh, do no, that? Oh, no, no, you are far from that. It's, it's doable. Young Filipinos are going to take advantage of their brain, mm. not just on this, of their skills. Mm -hmm. there, we're not tapping our young workforce enough, perhaps. Not enough because you are, uh, uh, you are talking about BPOs as if this is the tech that you are looking yeah. at. But this is not, this is absolutely service, a service-oriented uh, industry. Yeah. While it's a very important component of the economy, it's very also very fragile. Yeah. Are you, so, are you saying BPO is over? That we should no, focus on no, other no, industries? No, I don't think so. But I mean, definitely you have to make sure that the diversification and especially the creating spearheads, industrial and innovative spearheads that are going to create a good, a, a good a, a infrastructure mm -hmm. that is going to be sustainable and not always prone to others' whims and others' yeah. happenings. I know some of the people that I know that were considering traveling to Israel were concerned about um, some instability or maybe some security. fighting. Yeah, security, security issue. We are all very, very exposed to the international media. We tend to believe that everything is just, I mean, uh, troubles. When you go to Israel, you land in Tel Aviv, you're going to say, oh, where is the coverage? It's a whole different world. And more and more Filipinos who travel to Israel in the last three years discover that it's indeed there's a big gap between how Israel appears in the news, in the Western news, mm -hmm. and how it's uh, actually, uh, 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 how is the reality on the ground. On the ground. We were talking about the shift from Tel Aviv being the capital to Jerusalem now being no, the capital. There was never a chapter in the history of, oh, actually maybe one year. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel uh, from the creation of Israel as a state. There is no question about that. There were questions about embassies. Where are the embassies going to be located? But I mean, it's really ridiculous to think about it. When you challenge the capital of Israel, which is the historical capital of the nation of Israel, and you challenge its very legitimacy, you challenge the very legitimacy of the Jewish people. So you cannot do that. And it has nothing to do with the outcome of our negotiation with the Palestinians in the future. The Palestinian-Israeli conflict is a modern conflict, but Jerusalem is the driving force that kept the nation of Israel together for 3,000 years. 
So we have to separate between the noise and the voice, between the politics, emotions, and be, be a bit more rational. What does it mean? Politically, Israel has every right to declare Jerusalem as a capital. Historically, it's the only capital we ever had. Well, Ambassador, you know, I wanted to thank you. I learned so much and it was fun. I'm looking forward to a full year of more stronger, you know, stronger relationships. Eh, Todaraba. 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 Salamat po.